Because there are no super long-term goals in Star Citizen, it's far too easy to make UEC. A lot of the enjoyment that I get from the game, and it feels like a lot of the community gets from the game, is from these sort of community-driven events. Well, we had on the weekend three very popular Star Citizen streamers, Blasphemous, Authentic Young, and Smashly, uh, were going to host a 30v30v30 tank battle. It sounded like an absolute ton of fun, and I've run some tank battles in the past, and so I'm fairly sure it was going to be a ton of fun. But just before the event actually begun, there was, you know, rumors about that Griefernet, a well-known griefing org in Star Citizen, were going to deliberately crash the event. Not just crash the event, but essentially harass the creators themselves. Uh, hey, citizens, old man Johnny here. I wanted to jump on this one. I've been pretty active on Twitter on it. And uh, I think Karansi's brought up some really good conversation around this. I'd like to make a quick shout out to Arc VR. He's the one who kind of really did kick this off when he was talking about you know the rumors of Reefer Net, et cetera. It was really Arc that put the shout out. Um, and I commented on that as well, too, gave them some risk mitigation strategies, which they were already aware of, and everyone always does in these. And sure enough, as they got everyone together, and as they were about to start their, their big event, Griefinet rocked up and started messing around with everyone. Now, there's a couple of specific things I want to point out here. Firstly, this was not just like a chance encounter that these guys had, where it was like, oh, hey, there just happens to be 90 tonks down here. That's crazy. I'm going to, you know, use the abilities that I have to make some money. They actively chased these creators across servers. So because of this, and also due to just some regular Star Citizen stability issues, they have postponed the event. However, I am fully of the belief that it is likely just going to get crashed again. And this sucks. This sucks for everyone. This sucks for the community. This sucks for the creators. This sucks for everyone who actually attempted to join in on what is a lot of fun, you know, a 90 person tank battle. I think there's a really good discussion to have around here. Now, the first bit he's talking about here too is how much it sucks. This is, I'm gonna stop at these two first clips. And it does suck. In Skunk Works, we put on a lot of, a lot of events as well. They take a lot of effort to put on that style of content is really important for people. It is a good sticky thing for orgs and for groups and for streamers and for content creators in general to have that organizational capability to provide content to their members um, in a game that doesn't really have a lot of inherent content itself right now because it's under active development, right? So stuff like this, it really does suck when it gets ruined. The thing I wanted to talk about a bit here too, and it comes up all the time in these discussions, and I'm not... Going, I'm going to try to really avoid trying to shit on people on this one. I do have some feedback. I'm going to try to stay in the constructive criticism. And I would like everyone to try to stay in the constructive criticism mindset um, of why, one, I want to get more precise with our language when we talk about this. So all too often, the idea that PVPers get conflated into one big bucket. So at the very top, if we think about this is going to be mostly a, a topic of demographics when it comes down to it. And some startups speak with it, right? Like customer profiles and customer journeys and how people move through the game and move through the value prop over time. And what Kronzi and Smashly and everyone is doing here is part of that journey, right? When someone comes in, we have a very big demographic that plays Star Citizen. From our own community perspective, it seems huge, but really, it, it ultimately, in the bigger scope of things, it's actually quite small. Um, PC gaming is the smallest of the demographics when it comes to, to gaming. And inside of gaming, there is basically three main buckets. We call them space dads. I've talked about this before and I'll talk about it again. But in that bucket is mostly single player games, right? People who play single player games. They are attracted to Star Citizen. Squadron 42 attracts them a lot because it's going to be this great high quality single player game. And inside of the verse, inside of the PU, you can have a very single player experience in there. And it's nice, it's fun, right? Solo mining, stuff like that. It, it is quite enjoyable if you're into that stuff. And I have been, and other creators have been too, and other people have been, right? And we move out of it and get into combat, which I'm more into that now. And I found my niche inside of leadership and I enjoy doing it a lot and building a big team, et cetera, et cetera. And engaging in this type of content like that Smash, Lee and Cronsey and all of them are trying to do, putting on tournaments, putting on events, putting on OVOs, right? Org versus O. And having them disrupted by this type of, uh, demographic within the game is very frustrating. And then to have people that are great examples of PvP, and I'm going to call it organic PvP, stuff that just happens in the verse, they're not using external 
tools to find people. They're not watching the stream, right? They're not exploiting game features to get them, like back in the day when people would call people to find their location. And I think we need to get more precise with our language around these types. So underneath PvP, I'm going to say there's three types. There's organic, there's the actual griefing, and then there's premeditative. So, and that's abusive. And griefers aren't necessarily abusive, but they can be a little bit. The PvPers are not. Organic PvPers are not, which is ultimately what some people refer to as non-consensual. But you also have consensual within there. So I just tend to use it as organic, right? Either side, just what you meet, it's what happens. And you have griefers, right? And griefers term is used for PvPers all the time. And Space Dads, I'm looking at you on this and I'm holding you accountable for this one more than anyone else because you're a very large chunk of our player base. Going back to that demographics, when we start talking about people that play this game, you account for like a good 70 to 75% of our market. Um, <clears throat> the multiplayer people like myself or Salty Mike or, you know, um, uh, tons of different creators out here and stuff like Blast Me and, and Smashly and et cetera. We play with other people. We'll do non-combat stuff and we'll do combat stuff. If we want to get people engaging with it, we'll tend to go red more and get people to come to us. Although we'll do like some piracy type or anti-piracy type stuff at times too as well, depending on the mood, etc. But we're not solely focused on doing just player versus player. And there's that last group, right? The the 4% that are just massively focused on uh, PvP and that's all they want to do. They tend to be more of our competitive rank. And then that middle group is more the casual competitive. So you have hardcore competitive, casual competitive. That's in the organic PvP category though. Griefers fall into people that generally are using an exploit to gain an unfair advantage, a pad rammer, right? That's a griefer, right? They're taking advantage of the armistice zone where you can't really fight back. Or, you know, the piracy side gets a little dicey on when people run onto your ship, but you can mitigate that one. Like, you can fight back against that one. It's a bit of a race to the cockpit, right? So we all kind of want those armistice zones to go away because it gets rid of that griefing ability of an exploit, Taking advantage of an exploit is really where I put the griefer category in. I also say people that they're stream sniping are griefers and not necessarily abusive because they don't, they're not necessarily consistent with it. People can be tempted, they do it, whatever. You're griefing in that moment doesn't mean that you're an abusive player. The last group, and this is the one that I think is the demographic that we're talking about in this scenario and the only one that I really want to talk about. So those first two categories, I don't even really want to talk about here. The organic ones have nothing to do with this. The griefers are a different problem than the game system one, but the premeditative ones are different. That is ultimately abusive. And my issue here, and the part of the discussion I want to bring to it is, one, you're attacking just small business owners. And I kind of get where you're coming from. I get that you're upset and angry and that you're probably really, your focus is ultimately, or your anger is really at Twitch, let's say, or the people behind it, whatever. It t this tends to be very political when I find these premeditative ones, and I just don't care. I'm sorry, I don't. Like, I don't, I don't want to get involved in it. Um, but you're not doing what you think you're doing when you go after people like Smashly. Right? All they're doing is trying to create some value within their ecosystem. And yeah, it's their revenue. Like, you're literally attacking a small business owner there. It's like, it's, what do you think it's accomplishing? Nothing. Nothing. So if you have that problem, sure, whatever. Like, I'm fine with them banning you over this type of stuff because ultimately you're a bad actor in this scenario. The other two... Are like there's a good actor, right? That organic group. The middle one is a bit of a problem child, as middle children tend to be. <laughs> but they're savable. You can bring them back on the customer journey, and you present them with really good options, etc., and they get better, right? Like, fine. Ghost Hall is a great example of bringing those people out of that and and bring them back. And same with the community can. The last group, though, I'm sorry, guys. Like, it's it's not sustainable type of content. Right? Like, it's, it's not even that. Like, I do fundamentally disagree with what you're doing and all that stuff. But in the end, you can't maintain this. And you always churn out in the end, and it just doesn't work because you're, you're just doing value destruction. You're not creating any value yourself in the market. And the market is looking for value. I get all your arguments. Most of them are straw man related. Um, you know, they should bring security, blah, 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 whatever. I see IG should support them with these massive amount of tools and all this capital investment into stopping you guys from being just having bad behaviors, that's, no, you can just engage in cognitive behavioral therapy yourself, right? It's on your dollar, your dime, you're the individual. It's not repeatable it, it, and it's boring, right? Like I get you guys, whatever, whatever. 
But in the long run, you can't, no one's going to really engage with it. So on the creator side, for this side, I think we do have to accept, and this is my proposal for most of you, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. I think content-wise, there's some value in it, but is streaming these things unlisted, right? This is kind of what we do in Skunks. We stream them unlisted, and we can share it with our community to watch the live show. Then afterwards, you know, Katie takes that content, cuts it up, and produces a... Uh, content for YouTube, but in for something like Smashly, I would just say just do a pre-recorded broadcast and then live stream that pre-recorded broadcast to Twitch and then engage with your community around it that way. That way you can protect your event, protect your value creation until we get the tools to support live streaming this stuff. Because right now, if we're honest about it, a lot of live streaming these events is literally the audience sitting there watching the menu, right? We're just sitting there watching the menu and you guys chatting, which is nice. It's fun to engage with you guys that way. But the actual tank battle itself, they're very short. And all these things are, ultimately, when you get to the meat of it and finally get the setup done, et cetera, et cetera, they're pretty short engagements of the whole uh, broadcast. So I think in some ways, it's just as a risk mitigation and as a reality of our, our market that we're dealing with right now and the tools that we have and the stability issues and all that type of stuff, that that's probably our best middle ground to push back on this type of behavior by taking ownership of it ourselves. And this is kind of where I've been going with playing around with events and stuff like that. I'm a little more inclined to do the pre-recorded live stream. That way everyone can interact with it. You can, you know, build up a narrative around it at the same time. You give your editing teams and your community time to submit footage and get all that put together so you get this best possible presentation of the event at the same time. Um, you know, like Atmo Esports are a great example of being able to do that live, but it takes a lot of resources to be able to do that live. Like you need vMix, you need everything tight, you need you know, your, your, your team and professionals. And they are a great example of bringing a professional level quality to the casual competitive market. Like I think they're addressing the market really well. Like it's why I'm a big supporter of Kronzi and Crucian and the rest of the Atmo Esports, Detox, et cetera, et cetera, on what they're doing because they're bringing real value to our community and they're helping create an ecosystem that later on other people can build on top of. You know, it's, it's, it's fantastic. So I might ask you the grief for net, right? I'm not asking you to drop your beefs with whatever, whatever. But I would ask you guys to tone it down on these people a little bit. They're not your enemy. And you're not really accomplishing much here. Any hoozle. I don't think you really follow that advice, but no, it's up to you. Follow Chef Ramsey's advice then. Consistency, consistency, consistency. You can try to be consistent with content with this, but it doesn't work because everyone reacts differently to it. And ultimately, your behavior will just get too negative. And CIG will deal with the problem eventually when it's time for them to do that. Right now in active development, yeah, they're hands off. And I agree with them on it too. Like I think one of the great value points of CIG and Chris Roberts in general is that he's always tried to address all three main buckets of the gaming demographic. That's why people are really attracted to it, right? The single player people have a spot. The multiplayer people have a spot who want to be cooperative or non-cooperative, right? With other people, et cetera. And then the hardcore PVPers have a spot and they're really working on putting this all together. You know, it, we're going to leave it at that. And I'm hoping that other creators will pick up and, and anyone, you don't have to be a creator to do this. Although all of us that make content for people, whether it's on YouTube or just for our org, are ultimately creators. You're adding value to the network, adding value to the ecosystem. And I love it. And there's great people out there. Anyway, that was my little two bits. I love you all. I'm not going to go into the rest of Crossy's video. I really would love to go. If you want to see it all, I really recommend it. It's, a, it's a really well laid out. The only point I wanted to bring to the conversation is let's be a little more specific about our terminology when we're talking about PVPers because we're all too often group them all together, and that's completely unfair. That large chunk of the demographic that are organic players, and they're completely good actors in this scenario, and we should not treat them and put them in the same camp as ultimate people that are bad actors. That's Johnny's, that's Johnny's hot take on it. Love you all. Have a great one.